Hello and welcome to the webinar Creating a Simple Actuated Signal Control Logic with WISWAP. Sorry for the slight delay. Um, WISWAP allows the, follow, the flowchart based development and testing of traffic actuated signal controllers and other dynamic active traffic management applications with PTV WISIM. Um, I'll give you a short overview. Within the next half hour, you will learn about the WISIM WISWAP architecture and see how to develop an actuated signal control. This is done by means of a simple example showing the steps taken in WISIG and WISWAP. To the end of this webinar, I'll show you some application examples. I am Sven Beller, Senior Product Manager and modeling expert for PTV WISIM at PTV headquarters in Karlsruhe, Germany. Before I start, here's some technical information about the webinar. The attendees are not able to use the microphones, but you're free to post comments and questions via the questions window. My colleague Lukas Couch, who is also product manager for PTV WISIM, will reply during the webinar. After the webinar, we both will be available for some time to answer your questions via the questions window. Now let's go ahead and look at the WISIM WISWAP architecture. Basically, there are two types of data that are needed. It is the signal data you see to the left and the control logic you see to the right. The signal data in terms of WISIM is defined by WISIG, while the control logic is defined by WISWAP. The relevant signal data is exported from WISIG to a PUA file, while the control logic is generated by WISWAP to a VAP file. For, um, these two files are now the input files for the VAP module that interacts directly with WISIM. And for archive purposes or future changes, the project files of WISIG and WISWAP can be saved as well. So now we first deal with the signal data. Then in the next step, I will show you how to implement the WISWAP logic. To model the signal data, we use WISIG. And for this workflow, I will use a pedestrian crossing example. By the way, this is one of our most favorite YouTube movies. In this clip, even three different classes of pedestrians are modeled. There are the correct ones that push and wait. They're colored as green. The impatient ones, they push but they don't wait. The yellow ones. And even some ignorant ones, they don't even push. So, um, but here's something that needs to be made clear beforehand. There are different phrases worldwide describing the same part of signal data. So um, here is the terminology that we use in WISIM. First of all, the signal heads. This is the box at the mast showing different light colors. The combination of all signal heads for the same traffic movement is called a signal group. All signal heads of one signal group show the same color at any time. Mind you that in some parts of the world, the signal group is referred to as phase. So in this example here, we have two signal groups. Signal group A for vehicles and B for pedestrians. In WISIM, signal groups are identified by a number. Hence, the labels are matched to a number. A stage 
is a logical container that holds one or more signal groups. The signal groups in a stage do not change the state. They typically show either red or green and in some parts a stage is also called a phase which really makes it confusing. So we stick to the term stage. Here in this example we have two stages, one for vehicles, number one, and another one for pedestrians, number two. To go from one stage to another, interstages are necessary. All changes of the signal group states take place within the interstage. An interstage is also called a stage transition. In our example here, the transition of signal group A from green to red includes an amber period. After a certain time, signal group B gets green. This time is called the intergreen and this is a safety critical value. The interstage typically ends after the last change of a signal group. Hence, the interstage length of 5 seconds. For the opposite stage transition, going from 2 to 1, we have another interstage. It has a length of 8 seconds and the length of the intermediate signal states, the amber and red amber period, is defined in VISIC. Furthermore, also a minimum green time is defined. Now, but what for? Well, um, when designing a signal control there is an option that helps simplifying the control logic and provides extra safety. And this is called adding the minimum green times in, in, in the interstage. When doing so the minimum green time of a signal group is simply added after its green time start. So in consequence the interstage length is increased. You may ask now what's the advantage of this? Well, the advantage is that the interstage is finished only after the minimum green time is reached. Hence the control logic no more checks are needed to make sure the minimum green time is kept before doing something else, for example switching to a different state. So now um, let's go directly to VISIM and VISIC to model the signal data. I've prepared a small example here of an unsignalized pedestrian crossing. We use this as a starting point for modeling a pedestrian actuated signal control. I will shortly run the simulation so that you can see how it works just now. As you will imagine, as soon as a pedestrian arrives here at the zebra crossing, the cars are polite and stop. Now let's add the signal data in VISIC. Therefore I go to Signal Control, Signal Controllers, and with right click open the shortcut menu and add a new signal control. The type I choose is fixed time. and by pressing the button Edit Signal Control the VISIC window opens. Mind you, in the standard VISIM not all of these options to the left are available so um, the difference between VISIC and the built-in fixed time is that with VISIC you can build stage-based signal controls and that is exactly what we do now. 
First of all, we define the signal groups. We've learned before that there are two signal groups, so I add them by pressing this new button, and then I open up the details for each of the signal group. So first of all, I change the name to A. The default sequence is correct for the vehicle movement. I simply have to adjust the minimum green time for 7 seconds. Similarly, I do it for the signal group B, but here now we have a different default sequence. It is only red-green. There are no amber or red amber times. Also for the pedestrians, the, green, the minimum green time is adjusted to 6 seconds. The next step is the intergreen matrix. So again, I press the new button to include an intergreen matrix and edit the values. The intergreen matrix makes sure that enough or red period is between the switching of both of the signal groups. So these are the safety critical values. So if B ends before A starts again, there are 8 seconds, and the other way around, there are 5 seconds. Now the next step is the stages. I add two stages, one for cars and one for pedestrians, and in the next step I assign the signal groups to the stages. So double clicking in this field adds the signal group A to stage 1. The same back here, so that's signal group B active in stage 2. Also make sure that you choose the default integrine matrix up here. And then we can continue to the stage sequence. Now, the first thing we can do is now a fixed time signal control. It has a cycle length, in this example 60 seconds, and I can drag the stages, stage 1 and stage 2, to the sequence window and create a stage-based signal program. But before I do that, I would like to show you one more thing. What we actually need for VIP is the interstages. And rather than having to define them manually, you can right-click up here and create all the interstages automatically. That takes you to the list of all possible interstages. In this case, there are only two. And you can see here a picture similar to what you've seen in the presentation before. So, this is the three seconds of amber time and then it starts after five seconds of intergreen start the green time for the pedestrians. The other way around pedestrians stop and the vehicles can start at a green time of eight. Now, you remember the option including the minimum green time. This is an option you can choose here, and uh, I will do that just now. And to do that, I delete the interstages that have been created, go back to the stage sequence, and you find this option in Edit, Options, Optimization up here can add the minimum green times in the interstage. Again, with right-click create all interstages, I go back and you see now that the interstage length has been increased and this is exactly increased by the 6 seconds of minimum green for signal group B and 7 seconds for the signal group A. 
So this makes it easier later on to define the logic. Now to round it up, um, I've already started a stage sequence. So just for the first try, uh, we can create a stage-based signal program by pressing this button. And you see now this is a fixed time signal control which has a lot of green time for pedestrians. You can edit these timings here, so make it a little bit shorter. Still we have the 60 seconds of cycle time. And this is now something we can test in Visim for the simulation. I save the VSIG file. This is saved to a SIG file. And importantly, I need the interstage and signal data information later on for the VSWAP logic, so I export the PUA file. This is the one file of the two, if you remember the architecture at the beginning. So I choose a file name here. Name it pet crossing and I choose the start stage number one. Now the PUA file has been created and I can close the VSIC window. In order to simulate I add now the signal heads because there are two uh, links with opposite directions on top of each other make sure that you um, that you click the correct one here I select the signal control and the signal group this is signal group 2 for the pedestrians go to the opposite direction This is also signal group 2. And then for the main road, you can also create such um, cross sections by context menu. So this is signal group number 1. And I can use the duplicate function while holding down the control key to simply duplicate that signal head. Now we don't need the conflict areas anymore, so I simply set them to passive and I get rid of that zebra marking. I save this file as a new file. And now Let's see what's happening. You see now the current state of the signal head is represented by the color. And um, we have a 60 second cycle. The pedestrians wait at red and continue. Now this is not very um, interesting because the pedestrians still have to wait what we want to achieve is that the pedestrians arrive and they um, cause an immediate change of the signal control. And this is what we do now with the signal logic. So let's generate a new VSWAP project. I open VSWAP and press the button up here to create a new logic. The main VSWAP window contains five different parts. The first large part to the left here is the ones for creating the flowchart. Then we have four different definition and declaration windows. Ones for parameters, which act as constants basically. Another one for arrays, which are one or two dimensional vectors. Expressions. I show you later what that is. And finally, declarations of subroutines. You can use any VSWAP file and declare it also as a subroutine and call it from the main logic. We start now modeling the flowchart. 
So the flowchart window consists of rows and columns. New rows and columns are added automatically as you insert chart symbols. And to control the symbol type, there is a toolbar here to the left, which shows five different symbol types. The rounded rectangle is the terminus symbol, the single rectangle, a statement, diamond rectangle, a condition, and a double-lined rectangle, the subroutine call. Finally, the triangle. This is only for visual purposes. It's a page separator when you print the logic. As long as one of these symbol buttons is pressed, newly created symbols are of that type. So I start now with the terminus symbol. Right click and choose insert new symbol. You may include any comment in here. It doesn't have to be begin, but it's easier to read. And I enlarge the zoom level a little bit so that you can see it better. And immediately down here, I include the end. And in between, I include now some empty rows. Now there is a convention regarding the entries and exits of these symbols here. Entries into a cell are always from above or from the left, while exits are always down or to the right. And um, a good approach to start with the logic is to firstly check which stage is currently running. Therefore, a condition is needed, and I include that condition here, and ask now is stage 1 active. Now here comes the VIP language and uh, we need the specific syntax of the VIP language. Viswap offers a library of all available VIP functions. You can access that by shortcut menu, right click and choose VIP functions. And here you find uh, there are several groups of functions. I use the stage group and go to stage active. You see a small help line that uh, helps you finding out if that is the correct function. So it checks if a stage is currently running. That's what we want. I paste it and you only have to replace any parameters. So I want to check if stage 1 is running. So this is the syntax for it. Now you see already a condition always has two exits, one for yes and one for no. The one for yes is always to the right, the one for no is always down. So what happens now if stage one is active? The next thing typically we need to check would be the check for the minimum green time. but because we have included the minimum green time in the interstage, we don't have to care about that and can go right to the interesting bit. So the next thing is to check for a pedestrian demand. This is another condition. So I insert a new condition. And I simply type now something like pet demand. Now this is not a VAP command, so I need to tell VAP what I mean with pet demand. Pet demand is much easier to read than something cryptical, so this is where expressions come into action. I define an expression called pet demand. Let's increase the zoom level here as well. And in the contents, again, I have access to the VAP functions library. So I need to tell VIP now what there is. And for a pedestrian demand, I need detectors. Now, this is a little bit different um, as in reality. In Visim, I just go back to Visim now, uh, we can simply use 
detector loops on the pavement. So we don't have to care about uh, any calls of push buttons and it acts exactly the same. So what I do is I define a detector on the approach from the right choose port number 2, define the length of 1.5 and also 1.5 meters in front of the stop. This is to make sure that no pedestrian will get caught between the detector and the signal head and thus doesn't um, produce any call of the stage. The same thing we do on the other side, so I duplicate that and now, because I'm still on the link from right to left, I can press the top key at the same time. And you see it switches now over to the opposite direction and I can place the detector here. Just make sure, double clicking it, that also the before stop um, distance is exactly 1.5 meters. So and we have from VIP now access to the data of this detector. Therefore I go back to VIP and I choose now the occupancy time. You've seen I've uh, defined two detectors and they both have the same port number and the port number is the relevant number that I need to enter here. So port number two refers to both of the detectors and if either one is occupied by more than zero seconds then a pedestrian demand should be triggered. This is what it says now. Now if stage one is active that means the vehicles are running and there is a pedestrian demand then we can immediately switch to the stage two that is calling the interstage. This is a statement, so I choose the second symbol from above, insert the symbol and again I can access the VIP functions. I could also type the syntax directly if I know um, the command, but um, especially at the beginning it is much easier to choose from the functions library. So now we go to stage transition and this command is called interstage and it has two parameters, the from stage and the to stage. So from stage one to stage two. This leads us now to the line mode because we need to connect these symbols. The line mode is down here and it simply works um, in the following way. You can either draw lines vertically or horizontally with the left mouse button you select the start cell it is then highlighted and when you click with the right mouse button at the destination cell the line is drawn and that even works through symbols so to go back from interstage to the end with the left mouse button I click in that starting cell and right click here and again right click here because the start cell is already selected. If there is no pedestrian demand there is no need to go to stage 2 so I can simply go back to the end. So we are almost done but can you imagine what happens now if this would be our complete logic? Well the pedestrians will be very happy because they have continuous green but the car driver will get very angry because um, they will never get green back again. So in order to prevent some fights there we need to make sure that also the pedestrian stage will come to an end. I add another line here and it works in the same way so I can also copy this cell and when I insert, paste the cell, then I'm 
um, asked for moving the existing cell down or to the right just uh, to prevent from overwriting. However, there is also an overwrite mode. If you watch down below in the status bar and you press the insert key on your keyboard, then the overwrite mode is toggled. You see an OVR indicates the overwrite mode. And once I paste in overwrite mode, it just pastes no matter what existing symbols there will be at, at this location. So be a bit cautious with that option. Right. Um, when you use copy and paste, another trap is to forget to change any parameters. So make sure that you remember that. Stage 2 is active. There's no need to check for a car demand because we want to go back to stage 1. So we can move right back to interstage. And this is the opposite direction, interstage 2, 2, 1. And I complete the lines here. Save the file. name it pad crossing and now I need the VIP file this is done by compile generate VIP file a quick check is done if all the symbols are connected correctly and then the VIP file is completed so that's it what we need for the logic and now the interesting bit comes, we go back to Visim and continue modeling here. We've already included the detectors and I can now update my signal control. Double click on the row header to open the signal control data and change the type now from fixed time to VAP. And because now we don't have a fixed cycle length I choose the variable cycle length and down here we have now um, the edit fields for the two data files that we need. The signal data is the interstages file. This is pet crossing PUA, the one that we exported from MISIC, while the logic file we've just created from VISWAP. By the way, I haven't mentioned it yet, VISWAP is short for Visual VIP. VIP is a simple programming language for vehicle actuated programming, that's VIP. And VISWAP is the, um, the application where you can visually define the flowcharts for it. So, um, we only need to check now the signal group data because we have changed the type something has changed here as well so the minimum green times have to be adjusted it was 7 seconds for A 6 seconds for B for cars we have a red amber period of 1 second and for pedestrians we have no amber period So that's it, hopefully. Let's start and see what happens. You see now there's a continuous green and as soon as a pedestrian has arrived on the detector it triggered the switch to stage 2. So this is exactly what we wanted. make it a bit more um, clear what the signal control does you can also see the signal times table this is in evaluation windows signal times table select signal control number one and press OK and you see up here now while the simulation is running 
the durations of the red and green times and also wherever a detector is occupied by a pedestrian. This is the solid blue bar. What we cannot see yet are the stages, but this is also possible. And to configure that signal times table, I go back to signal controllers, double click here, and here on the third tab you see there's a signal timetable configuration. I deactivate automatic signal times table configuration and uh, to the right here you can find the type status stage. Make sure that you don't include all 999 stages, that will become a little bit long. And uh, include now only stage 1 and 2 because we have only two stages. So and while we continue to run the simulation, you see now not only the signal group data, but also the stage data visually appearing. I'll let it run a little bit. So now what you see up here, as soon as a solid green bar appears, then a stage is running. This is stage 1. In stage 2 you only see the two green lines, which means that's the interstage interstage from 1 to 2 and you see that actually stage 2 is never running and that is because we have included the minimum green time you see here the minimum green time of 6 seconds that is actually included in the interstage right um, as a final thing I want to show you about VSWAP is the VSWAP debugger. Um, before you activate the debugger, make sure that VSWAP's, VSWAP is actually running and that the corresponding VSWAP file is located in the same directory as the VSIM input file. It doesn't have to be loaded although it is loaded in this case, but this is not a necessity, but it's important that VSWAP is open and the file is available, otherwise VSWAP will not find it. And you can activate the, um, the VSWAP debugger also in the signal controller data. Double click again here and in the controller tab simply activate debug mode VSWAP. And what happens now is as soon as you start the simulation in VSIM, VSWAP becomes active after the first time step and you can um, go through the logic for example continuously, so this is the first button. It goes so fast that you can't see it just now, therefore I go to single step in VSWAP and here you can see now every command that is executed at the next step. So you can go through your logic step by step and see what's actually happening. Eventually now stage 2 becomes active and then the logic will go to the right. You see it now and starts the interstage from 2 to 1. And you see also now that this logic is being executed every um, signal controller time step, which typically is once per simulation second, even though the interstage is currently running. And during the time when the interstage is running, the stages are not active. Therefore, the control goes further down. To make it easier, to see actually what commands are executed in a signal controller time step, you can mark the commands, 
and that leaves a trace of which commands were executed in the last signal controller time step. So in this case, for example, interstage 1, 2 has been triggered. You see now the different paths. You can also um, include breakpoints. Simply right-clicking activates a breakpoint. Right-click again, deactivates it. And if you go to continuous, then um, it goes to single-step mode in VisMap once the breakpoint is reached. You can continue from there. And finally, you can also watch the current expression values in the expression table. So you see now pet demand is 1, which is equivalent for true. So therefore, um, the interstage 1, 2 is executed. And it changes back to 0 once the pedestrians have left. So, of course, for a simple logic like this, this is not necessary, but if it comes to more complex logics, this is much more um, of use for troubleshooting. So, before I come to the end of this webinar, let me show you a few application examples. With VisWAP, virtually any kind of signal control can be modeled and simulated with PTV VSIM. So this includes fixed time signals, change of signal programs, actuated signal control, public transport preemption, and even active traffic management applications. This application is a simple or a complex intersection, but a simple signal control. And uh, it includes also signals for pedestrians and bicycles. In the next example, we have a public transport priority. A tram line cuts through a roundabout that typically is operated without signals, but as soon as a tram calls a detector at a certain distance towards the roundabout, the signals are activated and provide a non-stop passage for the tram. This example is based on a real situation that we have here in Karlsruhe. You see now a tram coming from down below and it doesn't have to stop, it can go right through. And there's another tram coming from the opposite direction so that there is a continuous screen on the top arm whereas on the lower arm there was a quick period of green for the cars. A rather special application for signal controls is the ramp metering. So if heavy traffic is detected on the main motorway, it controls the motorway entrance in such a way that entering traffic does not lead to queues on the motorway. As VisWAP also offers functionality to control desired speed decisions in VisSim, active traffic management applications such as this variable speed control can be modeled as well. So here the speed limit is dynamically changed depending on the current density of the motorway traffic. Final example I'd like to show is another active traffic management application. At peak hour the shoulder lane is used as additional free flow lane to increase the overall motorway capacity. Here you can see the capacity is reached, there is a queue and you can also watch that by watching the aggregated um, speed values coming down below even 10 miles per hour. With the usage of the shoulder lane this queue can be eliminated and you can see now how that works. Watch that blue sign to the right. It will change soon. And at the same time the overall speed is reduced to um, get a better capacity. Of course, in the field, a seamless video surveillance ensures that the shoulder lane is not blocked by any breakdown or emergency vehicle. Otherwise, it's not okay to 
open it for general traffic. Right, coming to the end of this webinar, let me now summarize shortly what you've seen today. You first learned about the Visim Viswap system architecture. Then I showed you how to implement the signal data in Visic and the control logic in Viswap. This was all done using a pedestrian actuated crossing, which we then simulated in Visim. And finally, you've seen a few application examples, including active traffic management. So, just shortly, let me point you to our YouTube channel where you find the videos that were shown in this webinar. There are also numerous other Visim application videos. You can find them easily by searching for Visim Active Traffic in YouTube search or by opening the PTV Vision channel at youtube.com slash PTV Vision. That leads us to the end of this webinar. Thank you very much for your interest in microsimulation and for joining our webinar. Should you have any more questions, you can still ask them using the questions window. And Lucas and I will stay online for a few more minutes and write back to you. For all those leaving right now, all the best to you and have fun modeling with PTV Visim and Viswap.